Another episode of High Noon, motherfuckers. I got my trust. Maybe don't stop lifting your gigantic bag of weed on camera. This is less <laughs> no. than an ounce. I know, but I don't want YouTube to flag it like, oh, just oh, from it being and on there. It's literally the first thirty seconds yeah, like, of the episode, <laughs> and the only time they look. All right. Uh, <laughs> <I> got, <laughs> that's so crazy. I too. got my trusted sidekick. You're the sidekick? fucking Nicholas the Pack. And first time guest, Keith motherfucking Ray. Hi, everybody. Hell yeah. Check out his new comedy special on YouTube right now, live from the end of the bar, filmed at Kitchen K. Yeehaw! Yeah, check it out, man. That's a good... I was uh, there. I'm very proud of that taping, and uh, the numbers are going good. We're at like, almost 1,200 views in 10 days. Fuck oh, yeah, nice. dude. Yeah, yeah so yeah. definitely go check that out. That was really a fun idea. That was cool. Cool concept. Oh, thanks, And I man. like how you put at the beginning uh, the two opener. What would you put? The first two, two comics were too drunk to be here, so here's Mike Eaton. Yeah. Basically, <laughs> Mike, seeing as Mike Eaton can't get too drunk, he decided to open the show because two different comics got too drunk to open for me. Uh, can you say who, who were yeah, they? Yeah, Chris Reese and Dylan Sullivan. Oh. They're both <laughs> known booze bags. I don't think they're going to be... It's also, this is Austin. Like If you drink even uh, at my level... You're not really that bad of a drunk like this. There's a lot worse drunks than comics in this town. Oh, yeah. Yeah. That's just like the regular, the techie, the just people. Yeah. Or musicians. I, dude, yeah. These guys just drink SoCo out the bottle. Yeah. Dude, I've never seen shit. worse drivers than here in Austin. <laughs> yeah. Like, I've seen blatant just just debauchery behind the wheel. So I this is what you some... do? You get stoned and you talk about traffic? Well, I mean, well, yeah. Why do you want to? We can talk about trafficking. Hey, hey, this would be this would be good though, because I can do the perfect track traffic report. Uh, it's an evergreen traffic report for news, Austin. We have a news uh, drop. If you want to hit that while he does it? That'd be fun. Doesn't matter if you listen to this podcast a year from now, tomorrow, next week. Uh, I thirty five is backed up uh, from Sixth Street all the way to Holly exit. So, uh, yeah, and uh, now back to the show. Uh, that was just a moment of traffic. <laughs> we, had, we had a drop for it, but he wasn't fucking ready. I, did you see me smoking weed? Do, you, you still, you, it's literally, it's look, it's right. You just talk off mic on your whole show? Somewhere. Yeah, it is. <laughs> wanted this, this is the tech support. This. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, there we go. Now you can do it. Keith Ray with uh, live news from I-35. Yeah, it's, uh, it's, it's backed, backed up. up. <laughs> <laughs> it's backed up like a fucking pain pill addict. I'm telling you, constipated. Backed up like a Molly boof. Like a... <laughs> you, you boof Molly? Fuck no, I've never boofed never put, anything. You never put anything in your butt. Nuh-uh. Nah, yeah, he's dude. one of those gays. Dude, it's one a, time dude, I lost a, a hot dog up there. <laughs> Ew. Yeah. Um, what, were you exploring? You're only 13 once. Yeah. Were you exploring? Yeah, yeah it's 13. Yeah. Did it break off or just get lost? Yeah, it just kind of went away. <laughs> Never to be seen again. You think it just dissolved? I think so. I you think got I your were... small intestine absorbed it into your body. Or no, maybe I just have a uh, hot, hot dog inside so. me forever. <laughs> what about the next time you took a shit? Maybe it was just in there. Dude, you're like you're like Homer I Simpson. watched for a while, <laughs> hoping to see undigested hot dog in a fat shit of mine. What dude? if it was one of those phantom shits? You like the next one you took was a phantom shit went right down the hole. You're like, where did it go? You're like, oh God yeah. Damn. You know, I haven't be- had a phantom shit in quite some time. I usually mud the bowl like a Mason works a trowel. Dude, you know, what would be crazy as if they removed that hot dog randomly at like, you know, wherever old you are now. And you just like became not funny. It's like when Homer takes the crayon out of his mm-hmm. nose. Oh yeah. And he's, he's like not, super smart. Yeah. But now you take the hot dog out of your butt and you're like, <laughs> One plus one is five. Oh man, you you must have a ball producing this. <laughs> you have a you have a serious buyer's remorse clause on this. We can't have a guy from Indiana and Arkansas on the same show without oh, a buyer's yes, remorse clause. <laughs> yes, we can. We have, and we're we have doing Janet it. disclaimers. That's exactly what we're doing. That's the first time Mason ever chanted "Yes, we can." I'll guarantee that. <laughs> yes, we can. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Certainly didn't do it during any administration that had that as a slogan. I don't like the news. <laughs> yeah, Not reading the news. Uh, oh. Movies with subtitles. Also. Oh, yeah, I hate movies with subtitles. 
oh man, you know, what I like about movies with subtitles is you don't have to pretend like you're not trying to fuck to them. Okay, <laughs> bombed. I like, I like Yeah, it's a Netflix and chill kind of joke, you know? Like when you have a lady over to watch a movie, but really uh, you're just wanting to put a digit in there. Just the digit? Well, you got to test the waters. Make sure, make sure it doesn't burn off. You like the movie Waterworld or what? <laughs> Never seen it. Oh, man, man you're lost. <laughs> you're lost, dude. <laughs> That's Let me guess, to... I'm just like this character from it. No, no, no not, not at all. all. <laughs> somebody... <laughs> it's somebody just said a good I was, film. Somebody said I was like uh, that penguin from uh, the Surf and Penguin movie. You're uh, you're more like Kevin <coughs> Kevin Costless. <laughs> Kevin Costner, that, that was a striking young man. Yeah, uh, well, you know what's funny is he never had good hair. This is my mustache. He always just girl? had that little bit of thinning, you know, that stringiness to it. You have a great head of hair. How Keith, you could be 22 or 47. The thing is, is Keith is 31, right? Yeah. And, oh, we're the same age then. And I've known Keith for, wait, five, five six, to seven years. Five, five to seven six. years. Because you guys knew each other in California. Yeah, but Keith has not aged a day. Yeah. I look the exact <laughs> he looks, same. That's the that scary game. part is he wouldn't even. I'm talking seven. We'll go on the high at the low end. Five years, five yeah. years ago, and you're 26. He looks, he looks just same. like that. Yeah, <laughs> he hasn't aged a day. Well, dude. you know how sometimes I do that joke in my act where I say my age and yeah. people laugh at it yeah. just because I'm and, and I go like, the punchline's no. my face. Yeah, uh, that used to hit way harder when I was like 26, 27, yeah. because then I looked like the same, yeah. rough and rugged. You know, I don't know. I just. It's not like I've had a particularly hard life. I've never really worked hard at all. Yeah. <laughs> uh, the hardest work I do Get is, out to, of town. is getting towards that next 12-pack. Like, yeah. really? Yeah. I'll mow a lawn from time to time. I've really? painted a lot of porches. Yeah. I get, I get uh, fired for smoking on the job like no shit. every three months. Is it because you're doing it in the building? No, just I I take eight smoke breaks in a four-hour shift. And they're <laughs> like... Yeah, I know. I'm aware, but we I'm work together like, now. <laughs> so, to, all right. So, just a little backstory. I worked with you at Vulcan for a few months. Yeah. And you now are one of the door guys at the Comedy Mothership with Nicholas. So, yes. Yes. So, I, it's good to see that nothing's changed. Yeah. You know? yeah. <laughs> like, what are you doing? I like that you're sticking to your guns. Well, I remember uh, I get caught sitting on the job a lot no too. No shit. Like people are just like. <laughs> What are you doing sitting down? And I'm like, there's nothing to You're do. Like, my and feet then, hurt. Yeah, I'm just. They're, they're like, there's. You're supposed to be working, and I was like, there's no work. And they're like, uh, then they go and try and find me work. I'm yeah, like, dude, stop, but, dude. That's a. That's literally what people. I, I worked at McDonald's when I was 16, and the lady said, if you got time to lean, you got time to. Clean. That's a joke off my new special right there. Is it? Uh, yeah, I go. There's you got time to lean. There's time to clean. Did you work at the McDonald's in oh, Northern yeah, Arkansas? You, you talk. You talk about it's a McDonald's <laughs> in a Walmart. It's oh, supposed oh. to be dirty. Yeah. Oh no uh, shit. Yeah. 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 Uh, that was uh, that's from my that special. That must have been a McDonald's Too thing that they were taught Too to say. Too tight, Keith. <laughs> yeah, probably a fucking manager course from Hamburger College. Yeah. Right. Right. God. Mine was a mean lesbian, and she. I got fired for drinking the chocolate milk in the cooler. You think people are pathetic when they go to clown college? There are people who go to Hamburger College, which is like the university for McDonald's managers. Mm, they have to take a bus to Chicago and sit in a fucking convention center and learn. You got time to lean. You got to, like they couldn't give you five pamphlets and just let you work. Yeah. It's pronounced pamphlet. Pamphlet. No, it's not. It's definitely it's not. not. It's definitely not. Dude, Mason spells phone with an F. Yeah, he does. <laughs> And, a Z. It's, and it's a backward F. <laughs> <laughs> Dude, that's so funny. I hated working at McDonald's, man. Yeah. It was, it was the worst. I got fired. Is that your worst job? No. What's I your worst the, job? I used to pick up dog shit with a bucket and one of those grabby things that yeah. they give for old people to get cans out of the cupboard. I'd just be filling up a bucket with dog shit. At a dog park or no, just someone's yard? No, a fern apartment complex. Oh, okay. Oh, and you mean people weren't picking up after themselves? They told me I couldn't. Uh, they told me I couldn't smoke. And while I was, you were outside. While I was out there, and I was like, "Yo, my job is literally picking up dog shit. It kind of cuts the smell, you know." Also, you're outside. And like that. Well, that's your job. And I was like, "Well, not anymore, motherfucker. Yeah. I quit." Yeah. 
They really don't. People, employers years. really have no idea how willing to quit a job I've been. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> hey, like, I've always remember, been one. Remember that I'll one quit. thing didn't go my way when I worked uh, oh, in Vulcan yeah. and I quit mid shift. <laughs> yeah. Actually, one, I, it took one strike. You're yeah. out with me. <laughs> I can literally, I can tell you the story. I watched it happen. No, this is inside baseball, yeah, but. Yeah. I, Let's talk Let's about. You, don't you have a the, news story you said you wanted to get to? Oh, do you want to do the segment? We can do that. He wants to do jail tales. Oh yeah, jail. Oh, tales. jail tales. Fuck yeah. Okay, let me, All right. Let's like let me find this shit. Uh, <laughs> news story. Da, 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 it's da, da, just da, da, telling and talking about when you got <laughs> locked up. <laughs> this yeah. just in. Keith Ray admits all tell all story. Yeah, I don't know. Back at seven thirty. All tell all story, dude. How stoned are you? All tell all story. Go tell us all the story. Dave, I'll tell. God, man, this Dave all <laughs> That's a good pun. Good pun. Uh, you told me there was going to be puns in here. Oh, I did. And when you prepared me for having to deal with puns, I'm actually kind of excited about it. Whereas if you'd have just been doing those, oh, uh, man, I would have tore your ass oh, up. We call, him, we call him the Punisher, dude. <laughs> uh, there's like a little piece of my sto- soul flies away. <laughs> Get me some Stoli, a little piece of my soul for it. Oh, I'm glad I came up with it. Stole Survivor. Oh. Jail Tales. Jail Tales. Oh, I get it now. This is like the door slamming shut. Oh, uh, yeah. So Prison rules now, bitch. <laughs> with so a Z. Most people, most people that drink as much as I do would quit drinking. I quit driving. Because yeah. they're not going to get me for another DUI. Yeah, they, yeah. that's the best loophole, dude. Yeah. Not going to catch me because I'm getting an Uber. Yeah. yeah, I can't drive anymore. I don't even have the option. I sold my van for $400 and a quarter pound of weed. I'm fucking done. Dude. Sign the fucking... <laughs> Sign the fucking title over to a dude that plays bass down on you six. You sold your van for four hundred dollars and a, and a quarter of pound of the best weed in Austin. You guys want to try it out? God it damn it, dude! Like if I knew you were selling Let your van, see. I would have bought it, dude. Yeah, so it smells very nice. That shit. It's very good. I want to give you yeah. more money too. And when you have a quarter pound, you can use a little, uh, torch because who cares about roasting it up, dog? Just get as high as fucking kite all the time. Have us a little roast battle. That's quite yeah. the lighter. That yeah, is. it's a uh, it's a cool one. Uh, it would belong to my ex-wife. She was addicted to crystal methamphetamine. Oh, no shit. So how many times has that been inside her with the shape of that? <sighs> Zero times. Uh, why would I Why would I not use my dick on the tightest pussy in South Texas? Well, here, here, we're getting... Uh, oh, wait. So what's your story of getting arrested? Okay, so I got a DUI back in 2018. Uh, I was dating a girl who shall remain nameless so that... She's probably dead, but... <laughs> Like there are people that know who she is or remember her when she was, she was a good person. I liked her a lot and she was kind of feeding me a lot of Xanax, you know? Oh yeah. Cause Xanax makes me very agreeable. Xanax will make you fly close to the sun. Yeah. You're, I was, I was having a good time with Xanax. Well, basically I was trying to ease up on my drinking, uh, but I have social anxiety. So, uh, she was giving me Xanax for my social anxiety because she just sold Xanax and took Xanax. She wasn't uh, a doctor or anything. Sounds like a no. good person to me. And then like two weeks, three weeks later, towards the end of our relationship, uh, I realized like we were drinking on Xanax in the afternoons. Like yeah. It was no longer being used to quell my social anxiety. It was just about her wanting to borrow my car for whole weekends at a time. And, you know, uh, <clears throat> I don't know, like go on fi- five-hour dollar store shopping excursions <laughs> so weird time in my life and I, like i was still doing stand-up every night of the week or almost every night of the week is this and, in california mm-hmm, i lived in los angeles <coughs> and uh so every night it was like hit open mics then go hang out at the comedy store and uh sometimes there would be mics after uh the stuff you watched at the store or after the mics there we would go there and uh we broke up because we had to drive to pick up a friend of ours from the uh, airport. Uh, and at that point, like, I was needing to take an Adderall, like, halfway through the day because of all the liquor and benzos and I was on. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I was like, man, this is about the end. Of-. Like, like we, our relationship was tested by one trip to LAX from the Valley, and it did not survive. LA Xanax. <laughs> <laughs> That one wasn't bad. Uh, 
So we break up. So we break up, and I call my brother because now I have no Xanax connection. And I'm like, hey, man, I'm coming off Xanax. I'm going to quit fucking with pills. I told him exactly how much I'd been taking and uh, with the speed and uh, fucking booze and all that. And he's like, well, the key to quitting Xanax is to just drink twice as much. Solid. For about a week. And then taper it back down. But what he didn't tell me was to stay home while you were doing that. Uh, So I was just riding around L.A. with a cooler full of beer in my fucking passenger seat, strapped in with a belt buckle. Reaching back. uh, Seat with a seat belt and fucking... I had a cooler built into my... You can look this up. uh, 2009 Dodge Chargers. Or not Chargers. uh, (laughs) Avengers. Had an option where you could have a four beer cooler built into your dashboard. So I would have four in there all the time and then a cooler down either yeah, in the floorboard I need to Google that. go ahead go ahead and uh look it up with the uh chrysler dash cool uh dashboard cooler option okay uh you seem like a real life big lebowski i was just having fun i was young and having fun uh i mean what i was like 25 yeah you know uh so I'm driving around doing open mics. Uh, I I went to the comedy store to sign up for their open mic. I didn't get up there, so I went to another open mic. Uh, I got up there, and then I went to the late night mic, drank through all of this, stopped at Burger King, and uh, can you confirm the confirm, dashboard cooler? Oh, right, let me see. Confirm. Oh, let's can we put we'll the put yeah okay yeah. Uh, Look at it right here, dog. Yeah, dude. <laughs> Just imagine that straight racked up with Natty Light, dude. We'll put it on the thing, but that's so funny. You guys yeah. will be able to see it. Yeah, dude. That's Just so pop funny, that bitch dude. open. Boom. Fresh that's, Natty. That might be... that. that that's just so You funny, as... Man. Big Lebowski was rolling around with that. That's so funny, dude. Were, were you drinking Keystone? No, Natty Light, for okay, sure. Okay, They had uh, two 12-packs uh, for thirteen ninety nine at the... Uh, liquor store by my house, best deal in LA. Yeah. I love how you remember the prices of things in 2009. <laughs> like, 2000, no, that was 2018. Or 18. Well, I can. Oh, remember. dude, yeah. a pack of uh, Montego Blue cigarettes and a six pack of San Miguel beer, ten dollars even. Fucking dude, <laughs> three hundred dollar months. You know, yeah. six pack and a pack of smokes every day for three hundred bucks. Uh, he knows yeah. math, folks. Yeah, we know. Yeah, those uh, those were some times. Anyway, uh, so I'm driving home. I I stop it after I leave Boys Club, which was this really fun gay bar. Uh, No, it's an open mic in like a black box theater uh, called the Next Stage Theater. It was up on the corner of La Brea and Sunset, and uh, they had a liquor store downstairs. So, like one of the best hangs for comics in the city. Yeah. Uh, And I went up there, had a great set. Uh, I remember it was a really good set because I was like, I'm gonna treat myself, and I I'm went and got. Drunk tonight, Randy. I went and got an, uh, an original chicken sandwich from Burger King with extra cheese, uh, and a large fry and a large diet coke, and uh, took off for the valley, and somewhere around Valley Village uh, exit on the 101. I realized I was waking up mm, while well driving. Yeah. And I'm also barreling down on like the the metallic corner of an exit with no the barrels. Guardrail. The guardrail. The just, guardrail. Just going head on to the guardrail with no barriers between the guardrail and me. So I get it back onto the freeway, but I overcorrect and I spun out and crashed right into the wall at 65 miles an hour. Damn. And I wasn't wearing my seatbelt. And I remember hitting the wall and flying through the air and thinking to myself, oh, good, it's all over. I don't have to deal with failure or success or regrets or tomorrow ever again. And then I come through in a fucking cloud of smoke in the passenger seat of the car just banged up a little bit, not oh, it really. Threw you over. Threw me into the 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 airbags shot me over into the uh, passenger seat, and I remember flying through the air and thinking, "Oh, 
It's all done. No big deal. Yeah. Fucking. It's a solid way to have looked at it in the moment. And uh, <laughs> then it was very much not over. Okay. Yeah. 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 Did the cops show up? Or? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah no. So I get of out of the car. Yeah. Yeah. Of course. I was like, holy yeah. shit. Yeah, I didn't die. Uh, yeah. This guy's so stupid. He thought I died in this story. Was I'm telling it to him. Wait a minute, is Keith like, Ray a ghost? Keith's alive? Uh, no, yeah. So anyway, ghost of the open mind. I come dude. to and there's like a cloud of smoke and shit, and so I think the car's on fire. So I get out of the car and I call my pops and I go, "They're gonna get me tonight." I crash the car. I'm fucked up. Can't walk. Uh, worth a shit. Uh, I'm just gonna lay down here and play dead. <laughs> I'm going to pull a possum on these And fuckers. that is exactly what I did. I went non-responsive on the ground. Uh, did you close your eyes? And yes, I closed my eyes. And they kept running the, the flashlight over my eyes, trying to make me... And they kept saying, oh, he's clearly awake. Were he's you clearly, laughing? Were you he's laughing? clearly faking. <laughs> no, I stonewalled Keeps him going. hard as fuck. <laughs> I stonewalled him hard as fuck, dude. Every time they would touch me, I would just groan or moan in some way. And uh, they kept trying to get me to take the breathalyzer in the car or in the ambulance. Uh, and I just, uh, I gripped my teeth, like, so they couldn't force it into my mouth. And, uh, 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 and uh, they took me to the hospital. And my whole plan was milk the hospital for as long as you fucking can. Yeah, until it gets out of your system. So that I can, if I blow 7.9... That was no way possible. I was yeah. like 30 beers in yeah, yeah. on a day, and maybe a day and a half. Anyway, it was like that. But my idea was, so four hours later, the cops finally break me after just ear beating me for an hour and then threatening to draw my blood, which I knew was full of Xanax and Adderall. Were you still pretending to be asleep at this point? No. By then, mm-hmm. I had answered questions and was trying to prove that I was, I didn't want them to think I had knocked myself retarded and do a brain and inj- brain surgery. Might have got on me you or out something. of the whole thing. Yeah. Uh, oh dude, they, we're going to get to that in a minute. Okay. How <laughs> retarded I am. Okay. <laughs> because they never would have done what they said. They said they were going to draw my blood and take me to the towers downtown. What are the towers? The towers are like a notorious jail in downtown Los Angeles where people get fucking stabbed up and die and get raped like prison and shit like that. In jail. In jail, which that is not really how most jails are. And I knew it damn sure wasn't how the Van Nuys uh, fucking drunk tank was going to be. They would have called you Kenny Towers. So I go, I'll make you guys a deal. That wasn't bad. I'll make you guys... I'll make you guys a deal because I was all uh, I was like uh, drunk sliced alone at that point. I was like, "There you go." Yeah, Adrian, I'll deal with you. If you go take me to Van Nuys, man, I'll blow. So they they walk me out. They take the neck brace off me immediately. They're like, "You don't need." They're that. like, "That's all bullshit. We've all, <laughs> we've just been suckering you into admitting that you were drinking and driving this whole fucking time." They got everything wrong in my police report. <laughs> They said that all I had eaten that day was cookies and candy. Why and I was like, not? I said I had peanut butter crackers and gummy bears. That is not the same thing. Yeah, that's real far off. Cookies and candies, these fucking lit dick Gummy bears are candy. That's why you'll never make detective, Officer Suarez. <laughs> Fuck you. Anyway. <laughs> they pulled that head trip on me and got me suckered into uh, going down there. And I've I've been trying to get my mug shot for years because I'm smiling real big in it. Yeah. Like, well, I've got a big guff across my forehead. And I'm just always the, you know, I, I fixed my hair yeah. in the mirror. They took like, the, give me a second. They took the handcuffs off <laughs> me when they got me into the station. Yeah. Uh like show a good faith. I was behaving. Yeah. Uh, Where are you? Yeah, it was it was fine. Oh, and by the time I did blow, uh, blew a point one four nine. So still so, illegal, but not as crazy as it could have been. If it had been point one five, I did the right thing. <laughs> if it had been point one five, that would have been a felony. So no. it actually so it really saved my way. ass. So you're also you should have won an Oscar. I was. Oh no! They knew the whole time. They, they knew the whole time. They just, <laughs> they just. I just. just I just <laughs> fucking played possum for as long as I possibly could, uh, and if I could play it a little bit longer, maybe another hour. Shit. 
could have got out of that. But anyway, uh, the quick and six the grand red. cost me six grand. Uh, oh, yeah, not a fun. But feeling. hey, better than going to jail. Yeah, yeah. But uh, okay, so what were the fun things that happened out of this? Oh, I. So the oh yeah, yeah so you? oh yeah. So the next day, I get out of jail. I'm lacing my shoelaces. Well, we want to know up. about jail. That was the yeah. Point. Did you meet oh, any cool characters? What was jail? I went in and passed out. And when I woke up, they let me out. Fifteen minutes later, didn't even have to take a piss. That's a good. Okay. That's a good release. Yeah, a lot it was of times solid. you're in there for an extra fucking seventeen hours. Yeah, no, I was out the next day. Uh, it was on a Monday, so. Oh okay. Uh, so the next day. I get out of jail and they give me my shoelaces back. So I go and sit down in the little courtyard out in front of the joint and uh, I'm lacing up my shoes and who comes walking by, but my roommate, I had 15 roommates at the time. So that's actually pretty oh, good odds. Oh, Is this when yeah. you lived in the garage? Uh, yeah. Yeah. So this was, uh, so fortuitously my roommate was out for a walk and ran into me and I was pretty banged up. So he just bought me an Uber back to the house. Nice. And then my other roommate who was a good friend of mine, actor, uh, by the name of Devin Calderoni, drove me to the junkyard where my, well, I the impound, my car was junked. Yeah. Uh, and uh, I, I immediately got in there looking for my fucking sandwich. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And well, I you know, know it's what? in here somewhere. <laughs> and that fucking, because I got the mayonnaise on the side, so I knew it was still going to be good. And that motherfucking tow truck driver ate my goddamn sandwich. Oh. Left the wrapper. Piece of shit. Left the fucking wrapper, but ate my fucking sandwich. That's what that's what really irked me about that DUI. Was Mayonnaise like, a lot of shitty people in the <coughs> world. Dude, you know, I ha- I think I, I had it bad enough. I was on the way to the hospital from a car accident, about to go to jail, <laughs> and you got to steal my sandwich on that's top of it? That's fucked up. Fucking $175 to tow me three miles. And you need to eat my sandwich on top of it. <laughs> this is tip. I had to give him my car. As tra- yeah, well, I was, was like, I'm never gonna though, pay. Right? I'm never gonna pay you. So scrap the car. And they were like, Oh, you still owe us money. And I was like, Good luck ever fucking collecting yeah. it. So yeah. are you wanted in L.A. now? No. I'm and they, not- they 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 signed a paper that said that me releasing my vehicle, the tires alone would have paid the fucking bill. Right. It's a nice car. I'm the only not, nice car I ever had. I'm not allowed in Birmingham, Alabama. What? Yeah. You're yeah. probably not allowed to get in trouble here if it's only in Birmingham where they want you. They'll That's probably far. send your ass back there. Yeah, they'll send, yeah, they'll send you back. That's you a three hour know. bus ride. It wasn't yeah. a felony, it was a misdemeanor, and I just never went to court. Hmm. I wrote multiple letters to the judge yeah, telling her that I wasn't going to make it. Mason, you are wanted everywhere. No. Misdemeanor. Was what was the misdemeanor? misdemeanor? It was a, a public intoxication. Oh, yeah. I don't think they'd actually They're not going to do that. shit about that. You'll pay a fine. I yeah. said I'd pay. I literally, I go, I'll send you whatever money you want. Mm. I just can't come to court. And they were like, no, you got to be here. And I, I like paid a guy to write a really nice letter. You couldn't even and get a public did, defender still, to rep you on your behalf? No, they wouldn't. They said I had to be there in person. What, what happened in uh, Birmingham? It was Alabama. when I got arrested at uh, that Bass Nectar concert at New uh, Year's uh, Eve uh, while on LSD. <laughs> I'm good right now. Yeah. Hi. Crazy. Huh. High noon, more like by noon. These guys, you these know guys what I mean. Lit up. You know, pump, pump the. You brain. guys, you guys have any questions about my DUI experience? From what I told you, or did I go through enough detail? No, oh, it was yeah. good. Was jail tells. I've been arrested. I've uh, had three DWIs. I got one when I was Jesus eighteen. Fucking Christ! This 18, guy's a 19, fucking full bird sergeant. Yeah, dude. over here. Yeah, I'm hey, only private first class. Hey, dude. that that tastes really good. My brother's a corporal. Um, private Does first, that mean two? First class reporting for duty. Hell yeah, dude. Yeah, I, uh, I got one when I was 18, 19, and 20. That's the same as my mama. Oh. 18, 19, and 20. Heart. Yeah. Lost her license for 10 years. Got it back after about five or six. So, most, uh, so when I got my third one, <coughs> I lost it for like... Uh, he burps, dog, not cough. Oh, no yeah. Cough. Uh, I lost it for a uh, year and a half, I think. Or two years. I might have lost it for two years. But I was able to get a blowy in my truck. That's pretty I've good. gotten a bunch of blowies in my truck. Yeah. Did yours start it? <laughs> no. <laughs> nice truck. Because mine would start it. Yeah, I, mean, my, I would come. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I, mean, I wished I would have come after fucking... <laughs> Did you have that pickup truck back when you lived out in California? I got that one like uh, maybe about a year before I moved out here. But you, I, I've had but a, you had a truck. I had a lot of cars, man. Yeah. I had all those Volkswagens. Yeah, the company oh, Suburban. Yeah. 
that you were picking up dead bodies in? I rode that for a while. That was before comedy, though, before mm. I met Keith. Um, but I think you probably saw me with a couple trucks, yeah. Yeah, I got to say, the Not truck you have now just makes me jelly as a bean, dude. Well, I love it. Well, it's I the size it, of a woman's little bean. I couldn't. I, you see, I couldn't. I don't want to drive a truck that may, like Mason drives yeah, because, yeah. like, I have a reasonably sized penis. Yeah. Uh, My truck's regular size. It's just no, but the America made them that way. But the uh, yeah, I didn't the, fucking put big tires on it or anything. No, I get that. I understand that. It's just and the, I love my the penis. mind association of most women with guys who drive full size trucks like that. No, is that that's they, if have they have little those big tires. Is it the big tires? It's the, the big lifted, tires. It's the big lifted trucks. Yeah, my this truck's is like stock. a normal stock truck. Mine's like, just stock. It's just it's just like. But it, the model is bigger. Yours the is model, more like mine's, a, mine's mine, from the nineties. So yeah, yours like, looks like it. It's tiny. It's like has a, a lawnmower car. in the back of it. Yeah, like, yeah it's yeah. used for real work, and like yeah. you, you're not afraid to scratch the truck bed of it. Oh yeah, no, it's all. I mean, have up. you seen? I really my want fenders? to redo They're it. They're literally like, rotting. Nice and stock. Make it look like it was when it was brand new, and then just have a cool old looking truck like that. And then then I would care about the paint job and shit, but it wouldn't be like my everyday. I was a welder for eleven years. What does that have to do with anything? Because my truck was used for that. Okay. He tried to say my truck wasn't fucking made for working. I did not say that. I so say that insinuated. a lot of people buy the truck that you drive. What you say, that don't while, really use. While bringing, while bringing me into the conversation. That was good. Hit the brakes. Really scared the shit out of me. <laughs> oh, that, <laughs> that was he me, did dog. that. <laughs> oh, that was you? Yeah. That was him. Oh, my oh, bad. Is that still, make sure that's still, is it still going? Yeah, we're still going. We, we've got a little bit of PTSD from, uh, yeah. An episode ago. About 30 uh, so ago. I've got a really funny Keith Ray story I wanted to tell. Oh, please. I love this story. Uh, it's my favorite one since... Uh, it's my favorite Keith Ray and Austin story. Oh, so, man. So I'm kind of nervous never, now. I will never forget. <laughs> it, I don't remember why we were... It was just a regular just Friday. And you, you, you were working there, but you were off that day. Okay. And it was still hot out. It was like last summer when you were still working there. Okay. And it's 5.30... Like, we had just got there. It might be 6 o'clock. All right. And uh, Scott Wharton comes in and goes, Oh, dude, Keith, Keith's outside. He's banged up. Oh, you're going to do He's this? Ba- <laughs> you don't want, I don't want this story yeah, out there. Dude, yeah, I'm not gonna, I'm not going to tell, like, uh, I'll leave some stuff out. Okay. Wait, is no. this not the water? Well, now one? they're going to wonder. Yeah. Oh, okay. Okay. Yes, that's what I'm getting. I won't well, say. Well, will you say what the what the fucking real issue was instead of saying well, what you think it was? Sto- okay. Well, can I tell the story? Yeah. All right. Because uh, I've told you multiple times what was really going on in I this understand. situation. I understand. So Keith had been out with a. Uh, nice young, young lady. Uh, yeah, well, you, she was a wook. I think he meant ice young lady because. Uh, that's what she was definitely doing. <laughs> she was not a tweaker. <laughs> I knew her for a long time. Okay, well, she looked like one. That long, a long time. <laughs> she had anorexia. 24 hours, at she least. She had anorexia, yeah. and your boy likes him skinny. That's okay. the problem. So, so, okay, you know, to each their own. And uh, she literally was, I mean, weighed maybe 90 pounds. Yeah, 95. And it's, and it's about 110 outside. And she, this girl is passed out in a puddle. Kind of rolling around a little she bit. She wasn't in a puddle. It was a dry sidewalk. It's a nasty sidewalk. Looking like a little stinky baby bird just flapping around in this puddle. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah. Keith goes, oh, can you get us some water? And I'm like, absolutely, bud. So I go inside. I get a bottle of water. I come around the corner and I go, here you go, dude. You should give that to her. And he opens it and chugs it right in front of me. <laughs> He handed it to me, and then Instead I drank it. Instead of giving it. it to the girl that's passed out. Yeah, well, I had another two blocks to carry the bitch, okay? <laughs> I needed some water, it too. Was, it was like a movie. I mean, you, oh, thanks, Mason. <laughs> I needed that. I did. I did need that. I was on I was on a first and then, date. And then, and then he goes, he goes, hey, honestly, she brought this on herself. She challenged me to a tequila shot challenge. That is not what I said. Yeah, you said she wanted to go shot for shot. No, I just said she drank too much tequila. You said she challenged what you I thought shot was, for shot. And I don't remember that. And then that. you told me you go. I can't she believe she probably thought she'd go win. shot for shot with me. I because can't believe she thought she'd win. That's what you said to me. I, <laughs> I did never said that because that's not even what happened. We definitely did not have a shot contest. We were drinking at Buckshot. Then we were drunk. Then we went to get food. Then she got sick. Turned out later. 
she just had kidney stones and she was like backed up with bile and she was hos- I got her an Uber to the hospital when she sobered up. This happened uh, after the water incident. The next day. Huh? Yeah, I took I took her home and let her sleep it off and when she woke up and she was still sick, I got her a uh, uh, cab to the hospital and they were like she had multiple large kidney stones. It was funny to so, you brought up all her medical issues. Yeah, well, it's not <laughs> funny to think that I get women fucking hammered, you asshole. We were I'm an alcoholic and I drink with alcoholic women. That's who I date. I date other people who have the same hobbies as me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nice. Yes. Hell yeah. Well, yeah, she and also like dude, I'm telling you 95 pounds with D cup titties, dude. I'm telling you, this chick was fine. Fuck like a champ. I didn't find that out till later because, you know, <laughs> respect and shit. If somebody's sick, you don't try and slip it in. No shit. But we dated for like a month after that, and she was I awesome. you said you were going to marry Another her. person that shall remain nameless out of respect. Yeah, I didn't, yeah, yeah. We didn't need to name her name. Yeah, good. Well, she still follows me on Instagram, asshole. Uh, well, she... For all she She's knows, she's gonna see this it, clip and be like, be "That is different. not what happened. We were not doing shot for shot." She just is a hard drinking bitch, you know. She's a wook. Those people like to vibe out, you know. They Catch a sweet they, buzz. They vibe hard. Yeah, yeah, that's the only people who does as much ketamine as fucking Mason over here. Oh, I love K. Yeah, dude. I don't even remember the time I did it. I just remember it was like, "Damn, I should have done that before a show." And then I did oh, a bunch that's of blow. The truth. Yeah, came right out of it. Boom. Dude, ketamine is not meant to do in public. Yeah, but that's what them wooks be doing. Them yeah, wooks well, be on some hard K. Maybe. At the, but you don't want to just do ketamine and walk down 6th Street. Yeah, I don't think so. I don't no. Think so I don't think I want to do it and sit on my couch, frankly. Oh, that's the best. Oh, well, yeah. All drugs that are downers are best on the couch. It's not a downer. It doesn't seem like a fun time, though. It's not a downer. Oh, I love going deep on ketamine. <laughs> I like to snort a hey, gag. Hey, Keith, put your bag of weed away. Let's talk about the thrills of ketamine. <laughs> I mean, no, I'm not sure. I'm not trying I'm to not get us flagged a flag or nothing. bag dude. of ketamine, you know? Yeah, no, you clearly don't have any in this house. <laughs> no, I wish. I'm out right now. I'm out right now. God damn it. I've been ketamining to get some more. Yeah, this was filmed in Round Rock, Texas. <laughs> yeah. G Town. G-Town? It's actually K-Town now. Yeah, Pfluger, Pflugerville, dude. That's my, uh, that's where I live. Well, so how are you fucking, uh, how are you getting along these days? You enjoying working at the mothership? I thought you said we weren't going to talk comedy. <laughs> he's asking he literally you, told me that. He's asking you about your life. I know, but like, he literally told me on the way here, he's like, hey, let's try not to talk too much about comedy. It's kind of boring and shit. <laughs> I mean, I'm How asking- you like working at the best comedy club in the country? Well, I'll tell you. <laughs> It's fucking talk, great. If you don't want to talk about it, then we won't. No, I, I, I could tell you. I thoroughly enjoy it. Yeah, they getting mad. You said they're getting mad at you for cigarette breaks. So J- no, I did not say that <laughs> at all. That was your job. The job hey, I, I tried with to you. bring. I tried to change the subject to mothership, and then you were all weird about it. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm all right. I don't think I take too many cigarette breaks. Oh, I know you do. <laughs> Believe me, I used to get really mad. I used to get very upset with you. I hated working with you. We had fun times. Like we would, we would laugh. We would, don't get me wrong. We, and I wasn't. Thank God, I wasn't the lead door guy when you worked at Vulcan. You think I'd ever work for you, dipshit? <laughs> dude, dude. Are you fucking kidding me? The way the way that you you fucking, lost me uh, faster than Scott did. Yeah, yeah I mean, <laughs> I'd have been I like, know. well, well, let hey, me tell you. To be fair, I only work for people who not only know how to read but like it. Yeah, uh, <laughs> reading's gay. <laughs> I, I literally, I would have fucking, I would have told you to go do that spot, so. I know that. I would have quit for other reasons. Yeah. <laughs> like I said, he's a dick. He told me to quit smoking cigarettes. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's a, that's a reason right there. That's a reason and a half. Hey, uh, you said, uh, you said one time you're like, uh, or, uh, Grace asked you if I was a rude door guy and you go, not to me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but, but I see him be rude to people. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, there. Well, I mean, it's interesting. People like to prompt me to talk shit on others because I'm so good at it, and I just have a perpetual. I have a what is it? Called? What's it called? A perpetual penchant. Penchant. I have a penchant towards bitching. There we go. I have a penchant towards bitching. If you give me an opportunity to bitch about something, chances are. Did I you will. like working with me? Yeah, we had fun. Yeah. 
I thought that you, much like myself, pulled your own when it came to like moving furniture, stacking stools, and uh, moving them on. Doing the uh, job. Yeah, all the things that we don't have to do at the greatest comedy club in the history oh, of the world. Oh, you don't have to take trash out? No, we do right. take trash out. We take like three, we take the bathroom and the lobby trash out. That's about it. Nice. I empty and the trashes from the showrooms very regularly. Yeah. Oh, so you can smoke a cigarette? Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. It's my, one of my favorite perks of the jobs, throwing out the trash. That's why they called me Trash Boy on Skip and Chuck's Life Sucks, a show oh, available on my YouTube channel, Keith Ray Comedy. Shameless plug. No, no. Plug it. Yeah. Uh, when's another episode of that coming out? Oh, God knows when. Oh, you haven't. You don't have another one filmed. Oh, we have. Uh, we have a bunch written, but we haven't gotten around to scheduling the filming of them. And Those frankly, are funny. I kind of need to wait for uh, Chris Reese's hair to get a little longer. Why? So it looks cohesive. Yeah, I don't. I don't like the idea of him having gotten a haircut, and I can't really afford to buy him a wig. Why but, do you not? Why do you not like his haircut? No, it just looks less homelessy. Oh, he looks really good oh, and handsome oh. these days, and it's like. You're supposed to be playing a fucking degenerate bum. Gotcha. With only one sandal on, smoking crystal meth in an alleyway. And now you like, got a f- nice haircut. Yeah, you got now you got a nice haircut. No meth heads I, getting a nice haircut. Unless one of those barbers on TikTok go and give free haircuts to homeless people. Yeah, or like the guy under the bridge <laughs> is like, I used to give haircuts, man. You buy me a four loco, I'll give you a haircut. Oh, that would be really funny if he would uh if we had like one of those Instagram barbers. As an episode where he would they find Skip and Chuck and he just gives him like the one uh one like yard all the way right, around right through the front and he goes, Done. I am an artist. Yeah, like you're welcome. <laughs> yeah, he takes like one of Casey's curls and chops it off and he's like, That's And it. we have it. Voila. Why is it funny? Yeah, I like that. Yeah, I like the Joe Marisi one. Sure Joe Marie Joe I, Marisi? Marisi? Oh yeah, Did the I one with the right? with the military recruiter. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Was I funny. was really proud of that one. I love the the activity montages that we do. I think that they're they're the fun. in between, right? Yeah, okay. the uh, the little action sequences that we do is one of the fun parts for me because Casey's such a physical performer. If you're not utilizing his physicality, then you're kind of wasting the talent you have, right? And the fun thing about Skip and Chuck's Life Sucks is it was loosely based on like me and my best buddy uh, who passed away last year. And that was kind of when we went on hiatus because it was kind of hard to want to work on a show that is based on us. But we, it's so exaggerated. Like, we were never right. meth heads. Right. Uh, we we lived in a garage. We weren't homeless on the street. It wasn't an you know, alleyway. It wasn't an alleyway. It was a nice neighborhood in Southern California. It's not really, <sighs> it's not really the pits, <laughs> you yeah. know? Uh, but, like, me and Chris Reese were roommates uh, when I wrote the show. And uh, I was a big fan of Casey's stand-up. And uh, I just, we were so inundated in poverty living down on 6th Street because until the nighttime, like, yeah, there's still some ghouls hanging around. But, like, between 7 and, or between, like, 8.30 in the morning and 6 o'clock at night, it's wily with the most angry, wishing they were still rolling fucking tweakers and, like, really upset schizophrenic people. I've never seen more aggressive homeless people than on 6th Street. They're in abject poverty. And it's like, we were we were so surrounded with that. We were like, well, this wouldn't that be a great setting for a comedy? You know? <laughs> uh, and that's what, that's really what I'm most proud of uh, about that show is like that we took on the task of making probably the most wretched and, uh, awful existence is uh really funny right you know you know and uh, also kind of their own fault that was another part right, of it that we right, kind of they don't want to do anything about it yeah they're kind of they're, they're kind just, of happy they're with like, it yeah whatever fuck it yeah i mean you could give them more money but they would probably like not even elevate themselves a little bit they if you gave them meth. a lot of money yeah exactly and they're like, hey, you just gave me $500? Fuck putting this uh, towards anything. I We really, we have to confront, like, getting these people healthy as part of uh, getting them off the street if we're ever going to do anything about it. Because a, lo- a lot of the ones that uh, were, like, our neighbors, because we're living down on the block above a bar. Right. I mean, we were in poverty, too. It's just not as bad. You were indoors in poverty. Yeah, exactly. We were renting rooms down a long closet 
hallway right. with like ten closets off the side of it with a sink in each one. Oh, yeah, uh, ten people, two bathrooms, that <laughs> kind of situation. But they were cut up into half baths. That was a little bit more convenient. So you got two shitters, two showers. Uh, so yeah, it was like, hey, the people live like that. Yeah, and it can be funny, and you don't have to be a fucking tweaker to think Skip and Chuck's is fucking funny because yeah, yeah, right. It, there's like a voyeurism to it. Like I would never live like that, but let's that's see like, what these why fucking people love Trailer Park Boys scumbags yeah. are up to. Yeah, it, it it had some. I don't know if that I would say that that was an influence on the show, but I certainly liked that show when Park I was a younger vibes. man. Yeah, well. They were in poverty. Because they're happy. Yeah, that's another thing is there is no fucking poverty in any of these comedy shows or fucking uh, like sketch shows. It's all uh, like, oh, look at this nice house we filmed this in. Mm. Look at all these nice appliances. Every every Roseanne show on Netflix. was kind of like the, that was the, the last, last one time. that was like, you know, the middle, last time. You know. Uh, yeah, middle Portland, of the road, Portland, like yeah. uh, what's it? What's it called? Upper or lower middle class, like you know. Yeah, even we've got a house. Even King of barely, Queens, yeah. yeah, yeah, they're like living fat. Right. Uh, well, that's because the people that are gonna watch these shows are living in that same house. Like true. people in poverty aren't gonna be watching TV. Yeah, and it's poverty. like also yeah, friends that's a good would have point, never been real. Maybe we shot oh, too low right. for who we would want to watch our show. <laughs> but I think that's also something very specific and different. But people are and the name's it. great. Uh, yeah. Yeah, dude. You yeah, know, their I, life sucks. Yeah. I've been uh, I've been doing a new bit on stage about talking about how I used to smoke meth, and it's so hit or miss, dude. Right. Sometimes people th- are like, "Oh God." People have lost a lot of people to that shit. And too. then some people are like, "Oh, that's so crazy and funny." Yeah. I don't know. I don't see a lot of humor in that poison, but I haven't seen your jokes about it yet either. I have a few meth jokes, so. Mine's well, not a it, mine's Once it not, touches your it, life yeah, in any way. way, you're gonna write jokes about it, you know? Yeah, yeah and I make it I, I'm saying it in like a isn't this crazy that we used to do that? Like that's like the way that the joke is presented. Yeah, my ex wife was all about that shit. Oh, Turned you her into told a full blown that. alligator, dude. <laughs> what do you mean? Just a thrashing ass fucking Just doing the death roll? Yeah, just death rolling ass fucking Bicycle stealing, wheeling and dealing. Oh yeah, car she talk all like a pimp and Hot shit now. Writing. Like, oh, oh man, that was her first felony. Yeah, that was back when she was before she was ever a tweaker. It's where you that was steal just a check just for book, beer money. Not yours, yeah. and then you write a check as that person. Wow. South Texas is a rough place to grow up, and her mama brought her up in a bar, it's so she fraud. never really had a chance. You know. Yeah. yeah. She I mean, got dude, she that, got railed out by a bunch of bikers in the oh, basement Jesus when Christ. she was a teenager. <laughs> Sounds like a nice lady. Yeah, I miss her. She's probably the probably the one. You think she's your golden or your uh, white buffalo? Great if white there buffalo? ever was one in my life so far, hey, she's I mean your, maybe there there will be one to come. Yeah. She's your great white buffalo. <laughs> I I hit it last October, dog. You know what I mean? Oh. It's a long, Shit, it's a long love story. What you gonna do? Nothing. I had antibiotics at the house. I was like, I'll just take these next six days when I get back. Make sure I'm good. Oh, I needed to, I needed to dry out anyway. You know, I never drink when I'm on antibiotics. So. Yeah, why would you? You know, they Jeez. won't work as good. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Man, so you're good. just a real. Pic- I was home for my homie's safety. funeral, and she showed up on the porch, and she said. Uh, uh, I need a hot shower and a hard dick. Oh. You got me food? <laughs> Sounds like a lady. <laughs> She's a lady. <laughs> I made, her a, whoa, whoa, whoa. made her a ham and cheese sandwich. On and, Wonder uh, Bread? Or? Yeah, and, uh, yeah. Well, no, Sun. sun uh, what's it, it was called? Wheat? No, it was the, the sun, sun Bread. What's it called? Sun Bread. No. Wonder Bread. Wonder Bread. Wonder Bread. Talking about the Hawaiian rolls? No. <laughs> Sunbeam, is that what it's called? Are you talking about bread brands? I yeah. don't Wonder Bread is the, the go to white trash, like you know. Yeah, we don't eat that shit in my house. We eat the shit that's a little cheaper. Oh, oh, it's oh, Wonder Bread Light. Yeah, I don't know. I don't eat that much bread. Yeah, <laughs> Sunbeam sun bread, bread. You <laughs> fucking jerk off. What was it? Sunbeam sun bread. Beam. Okay, Shout my grandma to used to buy that too. Yeah, sponsor my uh, ex-wife's sandwiches, bitch. (laughs) 
fuck sunbeam bread. I like a nice whole wheat fucking grainy with nuts in it kind Ew. of bread. Anyway, so I made her a sandwich, and then we fucked, and then I went and gave my buddy's eulogy. Oh. So then I came back, and she, I let her, uh, what she likes to call it, drying out, but really it's just like finish your tweak on fucking fidgety and shit in my uh, guest room. My uh, parents' guest room with me where I was staying. Like, goes, you go through withdrawals quietly. Yeah, she just kind of tries to sleep, and then she can't, and then she tries to sleep, and she can. She has to run to the bathroom to piss the poison out all night. It's Oof. fucking rough. Got to drink a lot of water and coffee. Yeah, you know when people get arrested and they, they drink a whole big thing of coffee and then just pass out. They drink their own pee because it's still got meth in it. She oh. don't do that shit, okay? I didn't say she did. I said people that she didn't piss in the ashtray one time. Back when I used to live in my van, we hooked up uh, for a weekend and uh, we woke up one morning and she's like, "Baby, I'm sorry." I pissed in the ashtray <laughs> uh, that how big was the ashtray it was like one of those cup ashtrays that fits in your cup holder for like a so about a 12 or, uh, ounce yeah something like, like that, that. That's but she fucking pee, but, but she fucking spilled some of it oh. i was living in my van at the time i got a place to live like nine days after that because she made that van completely unlivable <laughs> meth pee we fucking stunk i couldn't uh. be sleeping in no piss smell yeah Tried to clean that shit. Can't clean that shit up with a broom. <laughs> sure can. <laughs> Keep I had a little half a broom when I lived in my uh, van because I didn't want to live in squalor. Yeah. You know. Half a broom? Did you, I mean, did, was it just the handle was half, or did you have just like? No, I broke it in half part. and wrapped duct tape around so the broken it part. It was a custom broom. Yeah. yeah. Custom made. Yeah, I made that broom. Where were, where, were, where were you living when we met? I, I was I was living in the garage in uh, okay. in SoCal. Can you tell me what you remember about the night that you came and brought me Molly, and then I woke up with that? Well, that I woke up the next morning without a shoe and had pissed my pants, and then then I had the picture of uh, whoever like put their balls next. Use to your mic. Place. Oh, sorry. You want to start that? Should we make him start it? I over couldn't again? hear you very yeah. well. Can you tell? Can you tell your side of the story of uh, that night that we did Molly in a, at Barmageddon? Okay. Um, when the night I woke up with one shoe missing and I had pee, peed my pants. Well, <laughs> the way I remember it starting was Amos there that yeah. night. Yeah. yeah. So mm-hmm. I remember Matt is like cooking on acid, hard mm-hmm. as yeah, fuck. Yeah, I was. That, so was I. Oh, oh. Okay, so you were on it too. Yeah. Okay, so I was talking with this lady. Shall remain nameless. <laughs> that's the, I guess that's gonna be the theme of this episode. Yeah. Shall remain mm-hmm. nameless. Uh, and uh, she always had good drugs, uppers, you know, uh, ecstasy, cocaine, uh, Adderalls, stuff like that. And uh, I like that's uppers because when you do uppers, you can drink more. Uh huh, true. Yeah. So I had probably gotten like a little bit of both Molly and Blow or something like that. And we just, I mean, this was a rowdy beer bar that gave, not only would it just let comics live in it periodically, like in their green room, but also like it was a great green room. Like it had its own uh, digital lock on it, like a house would. So no authority figures are coming in there without no pro- without proper uh, time for us to stash shit uh, or completely discard of it. Yeah. Uh, we had, we had, a lot of good times in the back of that uh, bar. They did. They put on lots of comedy shows there, and I'm just assuming that because, you know, that was when Elena and Mike uh, owned the bar, mm-hmm. uh, and maybe Jeremiah was still part partners. I mean, these are all people who really loved us. Yeah. So, yeah, they sold beer, and we would buy beer. But into the night, bars fucking closed. We drink till the fucking morning. And uh, best I could tell, if if this was the night Tom Goss brought me up there, or was I there by myself that night? I think I might have been there by yourself. All I remember is like we were dropped, we dropped acid, and we were chilling, and we did like a show, and they closed it, and we were all gonna have like a sleepover. 
Yeah. All the comics, big, just sleep over, hang out, and get drunk in the bar after, like, the whole night. Yeah. And I remember being on acid and drunk as fuck. Like, and just, and I remember just seeing you, and you're like, you want to try some of the best Molly I've ever had? And I was like, yeah, sure. And I, like, put my pinky in and put it in, put it in my mouth, and then boom, I woke up. That's really funny. And then I fucking just, like, woke up the next morning. It was, like, 2 p.m. in the afternoon. And, like, I was missing You're my like, shoe. You're like, why my pants and wet? And my pants were unbuttoned, and they were soaking wet. And then my and then everyone had, all the comics had a, or sent me a picture of, I forget, who put their balls next to my face. No. Like, oh, was dude. Out. Was it you? I think it was your balls. We've done it, it to It was your balls. Yeah, it was. Like, we've yeah. done this to a lot of people uh, over the years they in comedy. They weren't touching me or anything. They're just next no. to me. Hanging well, like, yeah, head. like, you... You take the picture and it's like their face and your balls. You don't like put your balls on them. Yeah, no, it was just a picture That's of That's sexual together. assault. Uh, damn, I might have put my balls on a, a bald dude's head one time and took a picture. <laughs> I don't know who that was. They shall remain nameless, even if I do remember who it is later. Uh, but yeah. No, there was a lot of balls, a lot of, like you're asleep, but you're like looking like you're about to pee on your buddy's face. Yeah. That We took pictures like that a lot. I don't know. That was a different time in comedy. That was when boys co- were boys, you yeah, know? I just wanted to boys know. Weren't, boys weren't little fucking pansies that get mad because your this buddy had his pre- balls four inches from your face well, last night for a photograph. I just wanted to know what happened during that time I, like, took the molly and then Dude, woke up. Because I was just like, what the fuck happened? I'm going to tell you, I'm going to have to defer to my attorney on that one. <laughs> <laughs> I have no idea what no. happened. But I do nice. remember... Lots of, I mean, we had a lot of good times there. Yeah. Also, if you're going to have me try and reach into the throes of my memory and it's not directly about me, maybe don't get me as high as I am right now. I mean, you did that yourself. <laughs> you did that to yourself. Don't tell me about getting You, you told high. me it's like come to the stoner podcast. I never like, said hey, that. Remember I just something said it's called high years noon. Ago. <laughs> That's Five something years. you assumed. I go, dude, it's called high <laughs> noon. Like, <laughs> it's not like, it's not stony baloney. Shout out Scott Wharton and Gabe I just Kerr. like how he goes, you shouldn't have got me high. And the first thing he does is pull out his own bag of like, weed. Yeah, literally. That's, that's the same out. thing as him saying, be like, dude, what'd you put in this? Yeah. Like, yeah, like my God. I told him not to let me drink. You didn't say, dude, we were, I literally, I go, I go <laughs> I'm going to go through the drive through liquor store here. I'm going to get a little case of beer. And he goes, oh, I don't want to drink tonight. And then he goes, will you buy me a 24 ounce Bud Light? And I was like, yeah. Yeah. Oh, is that what you said? Oh, I thought you said, oh, you can well, have one of my it, Miller Lights. And first. I was like, no, thank first you. First I go, you can have a Miller Light. And he goes, well, I'm the guest. <laughs> and, I, and I was like, what the fuck? He's like, you should buy me a Bud Light. I don't like Miller Light. And I was like, yeah, whatever. Yeah, you caved and bought me a Bud Light. I, it's fine. I mean, you can say I didn't me. cave. I thought you Creek put up in the a little, cave. I thought you put up a little bit more of a fight than that, but anyway. Did I? Because I, I, I it was it's really, sitting right there, isn't it? Yeah, it is. But it was funny how he was like, "Oh, uh, I oh, said, oh, you, I, can I, you can have a Miller Light. You can have a Miller Light." And I was like, "But I don't like." He goes, Miller "I like Light. Bud Light, and I'm the guest, and you're taking up my time." Oh and yeah, I, was I like, said, no, and I was I like, "Oh, was, hey, I didn't realize we were getting blessed was, with your fucking time." No, that was that was the fun part of the conversation because I was like, "Yeah, man, I'm the guest." I'm giving you my time, man. Time is money. I can't get a Bud Light. <laughs> and he was like, I'll get you a Bud Light. It was not. See, now that I remembered, it's all the gas is gone. Uh-huh. <coughs> it's all in my fucking Can ass. you cough on this mic, too? Or is it just burps? Just burps. Oh, I coughed bad. earlier on accident. Well, Sorry that seems like that. a good point. Yeah. Um, yeah. You got any plugs? Plug your Instagram. Yeah, I'm at, what you got uh, going on. at Keith Ray Alive on Instagram. Uh, I really love uh, you guys, Nick the Dick and uh, Mason Smith. You're you're a hell of a team. Uh, Nick gets retarded baked. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <Sits> back <in> the, <laughs> lays back on the ropes. I like that. You have your little kind of pit bull mentality. <laughs> you know, pit bull off the leash over here. And... Uh, uh, your producer guy is very funny, smiles a lot. I enjoy that. It's pleasant. Nice. Oh, yeah. Thanks so much for having me, guys. <laughs> you shows, plug you, you want to plug your shows up? or Instagram or anything? Uh, yeah, I'm going to be on a show at the Creek in the Cave, the uh, 7 o'clock uh, show <laughs> on uh, April 11th. Nice. I don't remember the yeah. name of it. Oh, okay. But it's going to be a good show. There's lots of funny people going to be on it. I saw the Fuck lineup. Yeah. Awesome. Very cool. Uh, yeah, come to the Comedy Mothership. See me there. Yeah, you can get yeah. tickets. 
Yeah, catch him outside mm. smoking cigarettes, guys. <laughs> <laughs> Such a dick. <laughs> Only time in my life I didn't want to lose my job. Trust uh, <laughs> me. Guys, check you're not out. wrong. <laughs> check out absurd junk oh, on YouTube. Don't show the <laughs> absurd junk on YouTube, dog. Hell yeah. Uh, and uh, yeah, check out that in the Sidecar Junkaroo magazine. It's uh, some funny shit. Yeah, side junk. No, not side junk. Uh, Junkaroo mag on Instagram. Not slide junk. Not right. like slide your junk into my willing rectum. Nice. Yeah. It's willing. Um, Always check me out on Instagram and YouTube and TikTok on Nick Fitzwell and everything. Uh, you can see me perform every Sunday, Monday at the Comedy Mothership. Hell yeah. Every yeah. Sunday, Monday, me and this guy go up. Hell yeah. You can see us there in the Little Boy Room crew shows. And uh, I've got the Stony Baloney uh, show on April 21st. At I'm on Kingdom that show too. And Kingdom. Stony Baloney yeah. show oh, at Kingdom. Yeah, nice. Hell yeah. Hell yeah. Um, I have another show on the twentieth, uh, TBA, um, May nineteenth at Vulcan. Uh, yeah, that's about it. Check it out. Why is the twenty eighth TBA? I don't know the venue. Midnight Mass. No, not the. Oh no, I said that. I said that one for the twentieth. Oh, gotcha. I and then, oh yeah, and the Midnight Mass on uh, the twenty eighth at Vulcan. Um. But yeah, so uh, yeah, I'm on the Stony Baloney on the 21st. Uh, Midnight Mass returning to Vulcan Gas Company, April 28th. Bingo. Get your tickets now at VulcanATX.com. Uh, and then also, <coughs> I forgot to say this on the other one, uh, uh, or, uh, May 13th, Midnight Mass at Vulcan also. And then please, if you're in Boston, June 24th, Nick's Comedy Stop. I'll be opening for Andrew Vickers. Super excited Hell about yeah. that. Hell yeah. Go to Nick's Comedy Stop, dude. That's fucking A. Legendary ass, fucking club. Featuring on the road. So excited That's to go That's a back. fucking king right there. So excited. Um, yeah, and uh, please uh, like, rate, review, and subscribe to the YouTube channel, Mason Smith's High Noon Podcast, and on Instagram, High Noon underscore pod. Thank you guys for listening. Keith Ray, thanks for coming on. Wait, you're connected. Don't walk away. <laughs> Howdy, partner. He's got to go for a cigarette. You know what I was going to say, dude? It's like when he gets to perform at Mothership, he gets to smoke. He's like, it's just another break. See you next week on the Dusty Trail for more hijinks and fun.